Welcome back to the show, everybody. It is Tuesday, breaking down a bunch of news, but we know why you are here. The huge Jalen Hurts injury. Poor timing for it, but we break down a lot of options. How are you going to handle that situation? Someone at this table has Jalen Hurts. Talk about how Jason's going to handle this situation. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The scream sounded a little bit more like you were falling than introducing people to the show, so it made me laugh. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Which some I, people are falling. Some people are falling. Tuesday, December 20th, the Fantasy Footballers, welcome in. Yeah, I mean... Infinitely. Jason Moore is infinitely falling there was uh today's the waiver show very important yeah time to look at least we timed it right we've got uh well yesterday i mean we had the really good news jason had a good day in the beginning of the day uh Bijan, please remind me Bijan robinson <laughs> okay declared for the nfl draft a lot of you know a lot of folks have traded for dynasty 101s and they wanted to see that happen and you weren't sure. You thought that was happening, but you weren't sure. So that was good news. Happened right here on the show. It was a delight. Oh, the good old days. <laughs> I'm, I'm old enough to remember that. And so things were going pretty good <laughs> during the course of the day. And, uh, well, then they weren't. And, and, you know, Jason got some news. <laughs> Jalen Hurts. We're just leaving him in the blue sadness. This is how I feel. This yeah. is who I am. Yeah, that makes I sense. I am sad and blue because Jalen Hurts, my guy, my my guy, the quarterback I have everywhere, the number one quarterback, isn't with me any longer. He's gone for the playoffs. Well, probably. And the uh, the doom scrolling that took place yesterday when the, wow. ru the rumors started to happen before the reports. And so... It was everything from Jalen Hurts. Collarbone is, you know, you saw the the odds. I mean, that was yes. the tip for everybody is the, you know, the MVP odds for Jalen Hurts. Had, he was the favorite. He was like minus 150. They started to, to dip and dip and dip. And then the line for the Dallas-Philadelphia game started to change and change and change. So you knew something was up. You know what I know is up? That all these sports books have inside <laughs> guys that is pretty like, I mean, yeah, I, it feels like it should be illegal because they knew what was going on before the world knew what was going on. Um, it is it is devastating. It is sad. There are certain situations that you can't do anything about. Um, you know, like if you had him in the Megala Bowl and like I uh, decided, well, I'm not going to win the Megala Bowl if he goes down. I'm not going to have a backup quarterback. I'm not winning the I Megala mean, Bowl. <laughs> those sentences were correct. I mean, um, they were. But. I, I do think, like, like as someone who, you know, has has relied on him and is trying to push through, I want to win this championship in spite of losing Jalen Hurts. There, there is hope, I think, for Jalen Hurts managers. Um, I was listening uh, to uh, Dr. David Chow talk about the injury, and he said, you know, if, if, they, if they needed to play, he could absolutely play this week. He could take a shot, and he'd be fine. This isn't... This is not a super serious injury. Now, I don't think there's any chance he plays this week against Dallas. He could. Tough it out. Go after that MVP uh, trophy. It's a divisional matchup. So, um, you know, don't don't be uh, moving on from him. That being said, if you could stream this week, the matchups with without Jalen Hurts, it's possible that they lose to the Cowboys. Uh, that's a tough matchup anyways. Cowboys are favored. And if the Minnesota Vikings win their matchup that they are favored for, that could put pressure on Jalen Hurts to come back for the championship week in week 17. That is my current uh, prayer. Uh, 
<laughs> and um, I'm hoping that is what happens if I can make it to week 17. Yeah, just to lay uh, and ju- just to lay that out, Eagles fans, Jason Moore praying <laughs> for your team to lose at just, at Jason FFL just for a week. <laughs> Well, you're, I, gonna, you're fine. You're going to get the number one seed. Let me have this. This is the tough part. I mean, yesterday on the show, we talked about worries about playoff positioning affecting usage, right? And I unfortunately may have uttered the words, well, McCaffrey's who I'm worried about. Jalen Hurts will be fine. Mm, you did this. Um, but here we are. And so Gardner Minshew is the most likely starter for the, the oh, Dallas yeah. game. Yeah. And frankly, you know, I saw a lot of people, and we're going to talk about it on on the, you know, we got streaming quarterbacks today, and we will we'll take more time with that to lay out some options. Which did we? Jalen Hurts has a sprained shoulder. I don't know if we ever actually right. It's probably is. important to break the news. <laughs> if we said what happened, it is his throwing shoulder, so uh, that makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, but yes, sprained shoulder. So Gardner Minshew, if I had to, you know, he's a very capable backup, mm-hmm. not ideal to be in Dallas for your you know opportunity so I know some people will have to pivot directly into Gardner Minshew but it's not my favorite pick his last start was the last game of last year against Dallas uh, where he was the quarterback 17 14 fantasy points in a game script where they lost had to throw a lot did throw for two touchdowns one pick didn't run much there, I, I feel Sounds like, about exactly what your peak is this it week. It does. I feel like overall Philadelphia is just – they're a better team. And it, it, Dallas Goddard was activated, so it, it, all signs point to he will be playing this weekend. And it's 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 like the Brock Purdy situation of it's, it's not the quarterback you want, but at least the, the foundation around him is, is excellent. Like Gardner Minshew last year did not have A.J. Brown. And Correct. now now the team has A.J. Brown, a second-year Devontae Smith, a breaking out Dallas Goddard. So the, the situation is at least optimal for a backup quarterback to come into. Other than the matchup. Yes. And be, being on the road against Dallas is not exciting. Yeah. I, the Dallas, I mean, where are you guys with their, their defense? Like the last couple of weeks they've – they have not like that game against the Houston Texans that carried over and Trevor Lawrence was sensational against them. Like they, like Trevor Lawrence, we were you could have been concerned to play him. Should you didn't have to be. He was great. I'm not saying that that Gardner Minshew is as good as Trevor Lawrence is right now, but they're you know th- things are changing for the Cowboys. It feels like. Well, they they've definitely had some injuries on offense. Uh, they they lost a couple players this last game. Um, so m- maybe it's a little bit uh, more winnable a matchup, but it's obviously a very important game for Dallas, so they'll, they'll be up for that game as well. Any consideration? I mean, this is let's just start with the man who's most affected by it, Jason. You have Jalen Hurts. He's been, um, you know, a, a big piece of your run towards a title. Are you glancing at Gardner's Gardner's direction at all? I so mean, that, I, that's a pretty yeah, easy question. I am glancing Gardner's direction, not just for myself, but also for keep away. It just so happens that the team I am playing is a team that lost uh, Kyler Murray, uh, that we have both made it to this uh, round of the playoffs. And so I, I, I am going to probably put in a bid on him. I previously picked up uh, Geno Smith, who is a player that I would look for on waivers. He had a terrible matchup this last week, very uh, possible that he was just dropped um, while people need players and he's going to Kansas City but he loses Tyler Lockett so that's going to be something I toil with all week well let's uh let's press pause on the quarterback discussions we'll get into it at the end of the waivers and talk through a number of different interesting matchups uh, we had the football game last night Packers 24 Rams 12 didn't go the way some people hoped it went for uh, a few of these options but nice games from Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, two touchdowns. Oh, man. Also 35 receiving yards. Thanks he, for showing up now. He morphed. I like I, The sentiment on Twitter was he was back to good old A.J. Villain of just taking the taking the touchdowns away from, from Aaron Jones there at the beginning of the game. But Jones was questionable. What, it was it his ankle. I don't remember what, he, what his injury was coming into uh, the weekend, but so it wasn't that it wasn't super surprising that Dylan was getting a uh, a a healthy amount of work at the beginning of the game. 
but then Aaron Jones came through. So it, everything was okay for the running backs, not so much the pass catchers. Or the quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. Aaron Rodgers, one touchdown, one interception. If his name wasn't Aaron Rodgers, he wouldn't be part of the conversation for next week. Cam Akers, 12 for 65, 3 for 35 through the air. Not great. Romeo Dobbs somehow led the team. What? Like, what? And then you had Christian Watson, 4 for 46. This was the super disappointing, the devastating story of the night, right? And, and Jason, I know you have Christian Watson. Mm -hmm. I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, I, I was I was fine with Christian Watson. This was a, I mean, obviously disappointing fantasy finish. Uh, if you had him, uh, hope you didn't need him. Right. Uh, but as far as utilization, usage, what I saw from this game, I was um, not displeased for the future. You had two plays that should have been touchdowns. Uh, one where they designed him right near the five yard line, uh, on a, on a, you know, he crosses right in front of Aaron Rodgers and just barely doesn't break the tackle to get in. And then the other one, Aaron Rodgers calls a hot read to him and he just doesn't turn around. So there was a miscommunication there, but they were trying to get him a touchdown near the goal line and the rest of the game script th look, they were in complete control of this game and the, the Rams were having a hard time stopping the run in this cold weather environment. I I you know I wasn't expecting that the Packers were going to have to throw a lot on this version of the Los Angeles Rams. So I'm not too disappointed going forward, very disappointed in the total output of what 46 yards. AJ Dillon uh was was the concussion confirmed cuz he left to be evaluated. Uh never came back, so, so I would assume he's in protocol. Yeah, but that's I mean so that that will be something to watch. Not that people are counting on AJ Dillon, but if if he enters the protocol if we get that news, I mean, Aaron Jones will be a very strong. Oh, yeah, you're matched up. Yeah, against yeah. Aaron oh, I know. Aaron Jones will be a much stronger play. How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing great. Uh, I hope I'm doing as well as uh, A.J. Dillon's doing. I hope you're just feeling great today. Mm. I don't know if he's doing well. Yeah, uh, he's he's so good. He's so healthy. He's just based on how Dude, you're doing. He's his his. <laughs> you, ask him a math question right now. He'll nail it. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> stay with us, Foot Clan, for this oh, this whole man. week. Jason going into a semifinal yeah. matchup in our very important league of record. Um, I would say, uh, before we jump into the news, just a couple bits of house cleaning here. Uh, number one, FootClanVote.com. If you haven't headed there, and we're up for a couple signal awards. It's a voting process. Uh, it will take you... You know, two minutes at the most would be very appreciated. We are up for best video podcast, best commute podcasts. So uh, so thank you so much for the support so far. Let's take this thing home. And then number two, due to the holiday, it, like football is all over the place this weekend, but it is Christmas Eve. It is Christmas on Sunday. There will be no live stream. There's I, But I believe in the Foot Clan. I believe you can... You can handle this this one particular weekend as we we spend it with our families. So when the tweets inevitably inevitably come in and say, "Where's the live?" I told you. I told Mike you. Mike is opening presents you. with yeah. his kids right when that is happening. So by that I mean all the presents that my children have brought in to me. Right. Yeah. We do reverse reverse Christmas. The kids have to figure out. Yep. You give them a budget and yep. then teach them a lesson. Mm -hmm. You I stay up till three in the morning on Christmas <laughs> Eve. You little monsters. <laughs> I got quite a bit of wrapping to do. <laughs> oh man, I'm sitting at a cool zero dot zero percent of of the wrapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something we could we could improve, like in society, like that the process of having to wrap. Like I don't, I don't know. Is that a thing where like some people know how and some people don't, and there's nothing you could do to learn? That's exactly I right. Think so it's yeah, like it's, a genetic thing. Yep. Like you could look up your 23 and me and see that I don't have the wrapping gene because <laughs> I, yep. I don't. I can wrap. <laughs> I make some ugly looking stuff which <laughs> in my head i think doesn't matter right you just gotta oh you're trying to get to the gift oh it's I'm not going Ooh, oh. i i subscribe to good enough i uh can wrap a mean present and it'll look nice that's yeah, one day one day per one present. full day i was gonna say I, you, it you are particular forever to wrap i'm so slow and amazon bezos if you're listening <laughs> let's solve this let me just order it wrapped i think okay. they do no, no 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 i mean good oh like, I, I mean like I'm like ready for the tree. Exactly. I want to be able to take this, put it right to the tree. What would you pay? What premium would you pay for that? I would pay a good premium. I, it needs to be labeled. 
I need yeah, to, you know, I need to know what's in there here. and have a to and from uh, thing. I want a bow on this sucker. You and know, then, uh, yeah, I'll pay a premium. You know how when you're, you're driving around and you'll see all the, the, the signs that say Christmas lights. And you, you want it? Uh, we'll come put them up. Has anyone ever done wrapping? Oh man, they should. Like That's I will pretty smart. I will come to they your come house. They come to your house and I will wrap come all to your, your house gifts? and I will wrap all your presents for you. I don't want them in my house. This I, is I'll what? set the gifts outside. Yeah, you can yeah. put them in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying like a you personal, don't want them in your house. A well, personal wrapper. They can't wrap all the kids away. This is like nighttime. I'm saying, yeah, just set up like those stands like the 4th of July what, on the uh, corners? Yeah. You're taking them down to the corner? Absolutely. Drop them down, pick them up an hour or two later. This is very That's interesting. That's not bad either. I mean, there's, there's, got, there's a solution here. There's a business opportunity. Come America. on, America. We have like two days. Let's <laughs> let's build these businesses up. You should just put all the Christmas gifts, because we all buy them on Amazon anyway. They should just hold them all, wrap them all, and mail them in like a Santa sack. Ooh. And maybe you, Christmas Eve? Yeah. Come into your house? Well, yeah, now we're, we're under- back in the house. Okay, right. <laughs> moving on. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We got Papa Josh in the slack saying he's great at rapping. Are we buying this? I well, will I will have him you rap think all Papa my Papa Josh gifts. can rap? You're telling me that at, at, in one of the many lives that Papa Josh and the jobs that he's done, he wasn't up north as an elf? I guess that's probable. Because, see, I, I put that at a 75%. I guess at his age, he probably worked at the prime of, like, Sears and stuff like that when they did the wrapping. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess that makes sense. Also, the Sears mace. existed. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, exposing your age. He lived in the... Is p- Sears around anymore? I think there's a handful of them. I think they still do, like, automotive care or something. I Just don't know. I think clawing. Sears might actually be around. Okay, good for you. Yeah. But well, it, you was lost, his, like, it was in its heyday when Josh was... <laughs> so they don't have their tower. They lost the naming rights to that thing years ago. Yeah. All right, news. We talked about the Jalen Hurts injury. He could miss the next two weeks. Like Jason said, I mean, if the... Basically, the situation is if the Vikings lose a game or the Eagles win a game, it's locked because they have the tiebreaker and it's a two-game gap with three games to go. So if either of those, those things happen, Philadelphia is locked into the bye week. And uh, that could determine whether Hurts plays next week. Uh, Dallas Goddard is back in week 16. Jonathan Taylor, injured reserve. Goodbye. Mm. He's gone. Yeah. And uh, today's the waiver show, so we'll talk about backup options. Cole McCoy, concussion day-to-day. Ryan Tannehill, uphill battle mm. to be ready for week 16 against the Texans. Um, Malik Willis started against Houston earlier this year. Here's your your your, your grunt, your Jason. Was that, lining, myself. That, that you thought that maybe Derrick Henry would be bad, but earlier this year, 32 carries, 219 yards. Did you hear that? 32 carries. And that is the hope uh, for Derrick Henry managers is that he's going to be the entirety of the offense. I still would rather have Tannehill there to make sure if things go wrong. The Houston Texans have been surprising people lately, but obviously they're, th- this will run through Derrick Henry, and he usually, I mean, I mean he has the Texans number. If you get Malik Willis, you're going to delete yeah, Chig, Chig Azigbo, and Aconquo. Uh, Aconquo. Oh, wow. You went Divine Azigbo. I went Divine Azigbo. Um, Chig Aconquo, and even if Traylon Burks was yeah. back, you just delete them. The pass attempts won't be there. Yeah, totally agree. Khalil Herbert, expected hey. to return to practice hey. this week. Welcome back, Mr. Saw a big Herbert. game from Montgomery last week. And he said, I can do that. Jeff Wilson was close to playing in week 15. So we might get Jeff Wilson back. Tough start sit decisions with Hooray. Raheem Mostert. Uh, Cortland Sutton is, quote, potentially available to play football in week 16. Okay. That's not the kind of, um, you know, he's taking on the Rams. But Jerry Judy is back. I'd play Judy well ahead of Sutton. When Sutton is on the field right now, he's potentially available to catch passes too. That's about it. Yeah, I would probably try to find a better option that's can trending you, the right direction can you imagine this is a christmas day game the schedule makers they said oh man the broncos with russell wilson against the yeah. super bowl champion yep. rams this is gonna be just a christmas miracle game and this might be the worst game of the season this this version of the rams versus <laughs> this version of the broncos is something that uh i don't want to watch zach wilson will start for the jets mike white is not cleared for contact 
So the there you go. The Bills ruined everything, man. This is Thursday night football, right? Yeah. So we have the Jets and Zach Wilson in prime time. Prepare your memes. <laughs> the, let, let the world see you, Zach. I mean, he has an opportunity, right? Go sure. have a great game. Sure. Yes, the opportunity is there. What's that matchup? Remind me. Jacksonville? Oh, gosh. He has an opportunity. He does. I hope we get a game. I mean, you if you want to repeat what you got from Trevor Lawrence and company, you need the Jets to keep up. Or it's not going to happen. So, yep. uh, And then Matthew Stafford confirmed yep. he is not retiring. Yep, this was, I, I thought he would retire for sure. But he confirmed this uh, good source, his wife's podcast. Yes. It, even better source, him on it. <laughs> it was from his <laughs> mouth saying like they – Was she going like – you're going to retire, right? <laughs> no, she was saying that she's been saying it, but people won't believe her because she knew the answer. Oh, was, that he wasn't? Yeah, so it's was like, will you just let people know? He's like, yeah, I'm not retiring. Also, one other piece of That's news. That's good for Cooper Cup managers. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, it's huge. Um, one other uh, small piece of news for next year, but it, it was reported that there was some meniscus issue. It was a, a clean ACL quote for Kyler Murray, but there was also meniscus oh. uh, tear. So that just makes the recovery timeline for next year um, something to remember in draft season a little bit dicier for that week one. Okay. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break and back with the waivers. It's been a busy week, man. Uh, there's a lot going on. It's, it's tough. Tuesday. And uh, let me ask you this before we jump into the waivers real quick. Where are you with um, lineup decisions, first instincts versus the late week tweaks? And how do you psychologically look at that decision-making process? Because I know we've all been down the road of, you know, you feel confident, you make your, your, your lineup, and you just move forward, or you sit there and you've done the Sunday morning – back and forth, back and forth before kickoff. Do you think that there's a better way to do it? No, I mean, I, I just going back, this is obviously anecdotal, um, but I feel like usually your, your your first decision is the better one when I think of, and it's probably because we just remember our losses, but when I make the last second changes, it's, it, it's usually a negative with the exception of actual changing news you know we we talk about how yeah, you want to react to actual news but the more so the ones where you are locked in but then you're going yeah you're second guessing yourself yeah. you're you know so like for instance my i picked up geno smith uh for this last week that's who i presume i'm playing i'm gonna question him versus gardner Minshew all week and so i guess right now i'm saying stick with it stick with geno don't be a don't be a fool but I will, I will. No lock it. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I good, mean, good, it, it's, good matchup. It's going to be tough. <clears throat> yeah. It's going to be a very difficult thing to not second guess. And, you know, you'd hate to be in a position where, you know, I know someone last night, Tutu Atwell versus Romeo Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs had a quote, came out, limited snaps. He And he did play limited snaps. Yeah. And then, uh, but he was the better play. But apparently. Because yeah, the other player was too, too out well. Uh, just, well, there, man, there was a. It was a bad drop that might have scored. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, I mean, Romeo Dobbs, just target monster. Who knew? All right. Well, uh, into the waivers we go. Welcome to the fold presented by Samsung Galaxy. All right, it is time to dive into what wide receivers we're going to welcome into the fold for the all-important Week 16. You've got some interesting names. Let's start with your favorite. You know, Traylon Burks was entering my favorite category, yeah. and it is now somebody that I am not going to. I'm not going to sign him because I can't play him. Like, yep. I just don't have any confidence off the injury with the Tannehill injury. And next week would be Dallas for Burke. So, it's, yeah, I'm, it's I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. I'm I think out. we got to take him off the list. And the truth is, is if Tannehill, even if he suits up, he may not finish. And that puts a tremendous amount of risk on a player that – I mean, do you agree with this, Jason? Because Traylon Burks, 
It's not like he's been a staple of consistency. There's no way you could play him with Malik Willis. I, um, you know, Malik Willis had 10 pass attempts last time that, you know, he played uh, as a starter against the same Houston Texans team. So, no, I, I do think, obviously, if Ryan Tannehill is out there, if you're in a pinch, I, I'd be willing to look his way. But at this point in the week when you've got to make your claims – you know, Traylon Burks maybe is a zero dollar last of my order uh, waiver wire pickups. There are other guys that you would prefer ahead of him. Is Elijah Moore one of the names that you'd prefer ahead of Traylon Burks? He, I would certainly prefer Elijah Moore ahead. As of right now, we're not entirely sure whether or not Corey Davis will be there. Uh, limited per participant in practice yesterday. And limited Den participant. Denzel Mims got knocked out with a concussion too. Right. And they have these short weeks. So I would I would expect Elijah Moore is another good play against Jacksonville. The matchup doesn't scare me. Obviously the quarterback play does uh with Zach Wilson, but last week he was serviceable. Um so Elijah Moore is certainly in contention. Uh near the top of the list for me is Jahan Dotson, rookie wide receiver for the Washington Commanders. I agree. Because if I'm going to put somebody out there, you're kind of making a, a couple different decisions you're going for I guess you would say like kind of floor PPR type of plays or you're going for an athlete and that you know you think of the Jahan Dotson the potential of George Pickens those type of players Dotson has scored in five games this year he scored in two consecutive games uh, a top 20 wide receiver in both of them and Jason you've said it a million times on this show you know the rookie wide receivers the ascension that we see at the end of the year Look back to Amon Ross St. Touchdown at the end of last year winning people championships. He was on the waiver wire, you know, as, yeah. as early as last week. So it wasn't like this obvious thing that everybody says, well, it's definitely going to happen. No, nobody had him. Yeah. And that's kind of what I see Dotson as, is somebody that, you know, is building a rapport with Heineke. He's obviously getting, getting better and getting into the end zone. Yeah, he's a first-round wide receiver draft pick in the NFL for a reason he comes out his rookie season and was a top 24 wide receiver three of his first four weeks granted those were touchdown base but I mean that means he can he can score he's he a can, touchdown guy I mean absolutely in the last two weeks he's been a top 20 he would probably be my number one wide receiver pickup it's risky it's against the San Francisco 49ers who uh they are obviously a very good defense are gonna have a great pass rush but they shut down the run more than the pass so I'm okay with Jahan Dotson because the ceiling, I think, is there for, you know, how, how many of these guys, honestly, Chris Moore is still a pickup to me. He is but for me, too. But what is his ceiling? Chris Moore's ceiling versus Jahan Dotson, who who has the chance to score two touchdowns? Like, I, not Chris Moore. Probably not, but I think I think Moore, we saw it two weeks ago, what he can do in Tennessee as the, the pass funnel defense. So um, Chris Moore is number two on my list. He behind Jahan Dotson because the targets like I know he's getting eight to ten targets. It, it, well, he's getting eight to ten targets if, if that that yeah Cooks he, and Collins. He can't be number two for me because you still have to watch Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins practice reports. I, I mean it. I I don't know if they come back to football this year. I, like we we don't know the full extent of what's going on with them. If, if of course if they're out, then Chris Moore is very interesting. A couple more names that I think are are intriguing this week. Russell Gage gets the Arizona Cardinals. That one 17% has seventeen percent rostered right now. Eight for fifty nine and two last week. Yeah, off of twelve targets, sixty two percent of the snaps. This was the Russell Gage that people were starting to you, you like. You were getting excited for him as the third wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then they picked up Julio Jones, and it kind of destroyed all of that that hope and that momentum. Julio Jones didn't play last week. I'm not sure what his status is. I was so this say, is that's the same as more to it, me. It, this is exactly it's it's very similar except you're playing the Arizona Cardinals and and it's still Tom Brady. I'd rather trust Tom Brady than or, over a Houston quarterback. And then the second name who I think is a like I'm gonna I'm gonna change my rankings and, and move him up. Of he's the a one week rental. It's Marquise Goodwin, absolutely uh, against the the Kansas City Chiefs. He will be the plug and play replacement for Tyler Lockett. He is nowhere near as good as Tyler Lockett because but Lockett's a top tier wide receiver. But his opportunity's fantastic. He's come through already a couple times in this offense, and they're going to have to score. Like the the, you, the Seattle Seahawks will not hold down the Kansas City Chiefs offense forcing passing, 
and DK Metcalf and Marquise Goodwin, I think, look pretty good right now. Uh, I agree with everything you just said. Those are those are my next two targets as well. Russell Gage has a great upcoming schedule. It's not just Arizona, but Arizona, uh, Carolina, and if you play in Week 18, you've got Atlanta. So if Russell Gage kind of establishes that wide receiver three spot, maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get it together, great. And then obviously Goodwin uh, this week against Kansas City. They're going to need him. We just saw him with 95 yards and a touchdown. He's had a couple big games. And if you're looking for a start, you, you have to start someone this week. This isn't a... Uh, long-term thing, Goodwin is as good as anyone out there on the waivers for who should be able to get 10 fantasy points this week. We're getting back to great win category? I think we so. We could be. Now, he's uh, a very good He's a good player. He is a good player. He's got Olympic-level speed, and I think it matches up pretty well against Kansas City Chiefs. That being said, this is going to be one of many super cold games uh, in Kansas City uh, you know, feels like below zero type temperature. So that's never fun for the passers. Yeah, and then you saw a huge step uh, steps back for Ben Skoranek and yeah. Tutu Atwell this past week. They couldn't do anything yesterday with Baker. But they got a really good matchup this week. Mm -hmm. On Christmas. Denver Broncos. No, you don't touch any of them. Yep. And then, you know, you've seen uh, Richie James. You've seen um, involvement from Isaiah uh, Hodgins. So, desperate times, if you need starts, those guys will be yeah. out there. The wide receiver, it's very top-heavy. K.J. Osborne, uh, you, you're, chasing, you're chasing a week that isn't extremely prescriptive yeah, for me. I mean, That's you, chasing the dragon. You, you, you've basically had, you know, you had a pretty big week in week three and then disappeared for all of ten weeks mm -hmm. and then showed back up. So, that's a tough one. Uh, they were throwing the ball a billion times in that game. They play the Giants this week. I don't know if I'd chase. I I don't, and call me crazy, I don't think they're going to be down 33 to do <laughs> nothing in before the half. And that's what caused last week's uh, explosion. K.J. Osborne, I think, is a good player. I like him, but to rely on him when he could very realistically be the fourth target in the offense, it's hard hard to put him in your starting lineup. I agree, and you can see all our waiver wire rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, for wide receivers. Let's dive into what running backs we are welcoming into the fold this week. Uh, again, on the waiver show, we are targeting lower roster percentage players, and so right around 50-50, according to, I believe, Sleeper, is Jarek McKinnon. I mean, this one is not – I mean, this is the layup of the week in terms of if he's there, you have to fight for him because he has back-to-back -back number one finishes – at the running back position. Yeah, and he's got a great matchup against Seattle. But let's assume he is rostered in your competitive leagues. And then that... Here we go. I mean, the, the question that I think most uh, fancy managers have is how hard do you go after the Jonathan Taylor replacement and who is it? The situation is this. You have Zach Moss who had the lion's share of the workload in replacement. As the game went on, it got even larger. No matter how bad he sucked, Jeff Saturday and the Colts team said, you're the guy we're relying on. Now, Andy pointed out in the studio that – because Deion Jackson is there, and Deion Jackson is uh, better. Just He's just a better running back. He's looked good. He got the touchdown last week. He was far more efficient on every single carry. However – he fumbled the ball, and when that fumble happened, that's when the splits were not so 50-50, and they gave much more work. Uh, I mean, they didn't want to, you know, fumble the game away and, and lose when they were up by so much, <laughs> so they kept giving the ball to Zach Moss. So you have a question here of, like, is Zach Moss going to be the leader of this timeshare in a significant way, a 60-40, 70-30 situation where he's the guy that the Colts are going to rely on, which I think has a realistic outcome, no. Or is it 50-50? No, I think it's not even 50-50. You think Deion Jackson takes over as the lead? I think Deion Jackson will have the majority of opportunities. And I think that comes down to my, you know, you have to write up what you think the game script's going to be. Do you believe the Chargers are going to put points up on the Colts? Yes. Okay, who's the pass catcher? Deion Jackson's going to be out there for the pass catching, in my opinion. Sure, Zach Moss so, did run more routes than Deion Jackson as well, so I, I don't think he, they have firm roles as one's a pass catcher, one's not. But here's the reality. He's the better player. Deion Jackson, like, let's say you get you go out there and you tell me 
Zach Moss gets the ball 19 times, and Deion Jackson gets the ball 14 times. I will absolutely take the fantasy points bet on Deion Jackson having more fantasy think, points than Zach Moss in that situation. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And I just think last game was not really indicative of their plans. I think if you told me I need a, a big guy to run into the back of my own lineman's butt and try to waste the clock out so we don't blow a 33 to nothing lead, I think you pick Zach Moss in that situation. If you want a more dynamic player, you pick Deion Jackson. So I am I'm more on that side. I'm not saying it's impossible that Zach Moss could be the guy. I would be fighting tooth and nail for someone like Tyler Algier over either of those names. Tyler Algier is 39% rostered, but you know people don't realize how good he's been and how committed the team is to him. If Cordero Patterson was out on the waiver wire right now, what would we be discussing in the in the running back sure. section? Nobody looks at Tyler Algier that way, but he gets more opportunities on the ground than Patterson every single week. Caleb Huntley is now out with an Achilles injury. That's a, it's not a huge amount of snaps, but that's it's more snaps. And I know you don't like the matchups because you know Baltimore is not a fun one on the road. The Falcons do not care who they're playing, where they're playing, what the score is. They will hand the ball off to the running backs over and over and over again. Algier was 17 for 139 against the New Orleans front last week. You know, if McKinnon is presumably rostered, which in any competitive league he 100% is after last week's RB1 finish, so he's not even really worth a discussion, I'm going Algier over Jackson and Moss. I, I will go Deion Jackson over Algier. Like I, I will, I will go far harder the other way, and I think Algiers a good pickup as well. But the fact that the matchup—if I have to start one of these guys—the matchup against the Chargers versus on the road Baltimore, um, the chance at you know—I I think both offenses are about the same quality as you know ability to put up points. And Deion Jackson going beyond that plays the Giants and the Houston Texans rest of the season. Both of these situations are... Algier gets the Cardinals in two weeks. Uh, both of these situations, you know, Caleb Huntley is done for the season. Jonathan Taylor is done. But Caleb Huntley, I think, the, you know, the last several weeks has been sub-five opportunities in, in each game. So, Jonathan Taylor being gone, I think you have a chance that Deion Jackson is, you know, is, is a league winner. Uh, it, so that's the player I'm going after. I I don't disagree that there is a chance that one of those guys could become that, but and I if if when I'm making my bet, I I'm putting it on Deion Jackson too. The between like, him and Moss, be, between, between him and LG, between him and Moss, gotcha. of which of the Indianapolis Colts is the breakout? I mean, r also remember the plan for that game all week was Jonathan Taylor. Mm -hmm. That was the game plan. And then it was, we have to react in real time and try and figure out how what are we going to do here. Again, it could still end up, it could be Zach Moss. That's why, and so so that's why I'm with Andy of, I'm going to go Tyler Algier, even though the matchup isn't nearly as good, but I know for sure what his role is in the offense. So I, and at this point, I, I, it's a it's a very strange bet of, Huge, huge upside, but if you miss, you just – it's a complete – it could be a complete whiff where Tyler Algier will at least be steady and has some upside because he's, he's been pretty good for, considering his, his situation. I just, I just wanted to look back and remind myself, 24 carries for Zach Moss, and he scored eight fantasy points. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean it's a. I mean, it, you're gonna have to make your yeah. call based off of the information that we've laid out. And, At least there's good what options. Here. Good I options mean, to go after. Yeah, yep. Deion Jackson uh, has a great opportunity against the Chargers this week. Algier, Arizona next week for the championship week. Um, Cam Akers, you know he's going to get a decent amount of touches. Probably rostered. Plays Denver. What do you do with the Chuba Hubbard Deonta Foreman situation? Hubbard um, was awful. Uh, Deonta Foreman was awful. Hubbard caught three passes, which is redeemable. Uh, if you have to pick someone up, you can't get the other guys on the list. Hubbard is uh, an okay pickup, but he's playing against Detroit. The, the Lions have been shutting down the run completely uh, over the last two months, so I'm not excited about Hubbard. And I, you know, hopefully you don't have to start one of those guys. I would rather roster someone like Jordan Mason. Uh, Alexander Madison. If you don't have to play, if them. I'm not yeah, playing, of course. Them. Um, 
you know, I, I think a lot of people might still be using their last bench spot on someone who can play like a Hubbard. But if you're not playing him, have the upside on your bench of, look, Jonathan Taylor just went down and now there's the mad dash. If, if you know, Dalvin Cook were to go down, if Austin Eckler were to go down, Joshua Kelly seems to be the clear backup. If Najee goes down, Jalen Warren is the backup. Those guys turn into championship week mm -hmm. winning running backs. Uh, are you fighting for Khalil Herbert? He's got two tougher matchups coming off of injured reserve. Detroit, you just talked about it. They shut down the run, and they they're the Bears are in Detroit next week, and then Buffalo this week. I'm not fighting for him. It's good to remember that he's coming back. Honestly, what he probably does is ruins a little bit of David Montgomery. If he is active for the game, they'll split the workload, and it's still Justin Fields as RB1. Tight end options this week. You can look at Taysom Hill, 37% rostered. Uh, had the passing touchdown and 80 yarder last week. Seven opportunities on the ground. Like if you're if you're telling me nine chances for Taysom Hill, like okay, hope they go well. <laughs> I mean, you got to hit one. Yeah, you do. I mean, it's uh, Cleveland in the lowest over under in in five years, something like that. In a decade. Oh, in a decade. Oh man. So there you go. And then um. You know, that could be the kind of game, though, that they just, you know, he gets a few more opportunities on the ground. Evan Ingram, don't pick him up, but Shmevin Schmingram has an opportunity against the Jets, 10 targets last week. What does this guy have to do? Um, Currently the tight end four not, on the season? Not not like, like bury your soul when you need him most? Uh, he's winning. He's, he's winning championships right now. Uh, Dawson Knox. I think would have the, the tiebreaker over these guys. He's obviously been good the last few weeks, and he's got Josh Allen, so you can always rely on uh, Josh Allen to throw a couple touchdowns, and you can hope it goes to your guy. And you talked about Chig uh, not being a, a tight end that you could play this week if Ryan Tannehill has a legit chance of missing or even starting and then going out during the game. Schmevin has had a really good year. He has. Schmevin since week five it would be on pace for eighty for eight fifty and seven. Yep. Uh, I, I don't like know it. how he has a one for eight game and a one for four game mixed in there, but he does. In in the middle, he he remember he did get beat up. Like you can't tell because of the box score and the snaps, but he got hurt. Uh, Dawson Knox, Jason brought him up. Juwan Johnson. Yeah, baby. Jo Ma Mike. <laughs> I mean, it's just it be. Well, and one, Lowest I, over under the week. But, I, well, uh, I had to be excited for Juwan Johnson contractually because of how the year started of Taysom Hill versus Juwan Johnson. But looking at what he has done is outrageous. It's all on the back of touchdowns, but whatever. It, with this tier of a player, I do not care. But in well, this is one, two, three, four, five, in his past, in his past six actual healthy games, he's been – a top five tight end in four of them. Like he's tough to argue with that. He's been so fantastic, and he just like he's got something going on with Andy Dalton. There is there is a little bit of a end zone meld going on. Yeah, he's had two touchdowns, one, 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 and then two back in week seven. So that that means he's basically got uh, what is that? Seventeen touchdown pace in the last seven games. That's you have to chase that a little bit if a you need bit, help yeah. at tight end. Yeah. Let's dive into the team defenses. Who's your favorite this week of the available options? We've got um, basically one, two, three, four, five, six options under 33% rostered at the defensive position. I mean, I had previously picked up the Tennessee Titans. Uh, they've got some injuries that hopefully are, are going to heal up. They've lost four games in a row, and they're playing against the Houston Texans that were the matchup you just were dreaming about starting over and over and over. You wanted to target them. I think they're still good, but I don't know if they're number one anymore. A little um, nerve-wracking, too, with Malik Willis, short field situation turnovers. Exactly. I, I love the Cleveland Browns. We've talked uh, a lot about how the over-under in that game is – Super low. I want the home team in that cold weather matchup. Andy Dalton can uh, turn the ball over. You know, if I had to bet on a team to score a defensive touchdown, they're they're near the top of the list of you, the free agent uh, options. Cleveland taking on New Orleans at home. Do you take the New Orleans side too? Yeah. No. Absolutely. You can go either side, but obviously in those situations where it's a 
pretty competitive, evenly matched, you know, similar defenses, similar offenses. I would always prefer the home team. 15-point implied point total for the Saints in that game. Right. The Chargers defense plays Indianapolis. Yeah, I like it. Bengals play New England. I like it. Steelers take on the Raiders. Uh, yeah. That that one's always yeah, got it, some risk, man. Yeah, it the does. Raiders have risk. The Jag the Jags is yeah. uh, the Thursday night. The Thursday night. It's coming up quick here, but they're playing the Zach Wilson version of the New York Jets. I'm fine targeting Zach Wilson. I think you need to. I you agree. know he's going to make some really, oh, really man. embarrassing mistakes. <laughs> if you missed the play, I, I, I think we were able to find it searching like Michael Carter bailout or something where it uh, it's a positive play on the stat sheet. But just watch what Zach the decision that Zach Wilson goes with, the angle that he decides to throw the ball. It is just a like I don't even know like a. It, the goes, ball. it goes straight up into the air. It had to have slipped out of his hand as he threw it or something because okay. you've, you've never seen a more wobbly. It's like you threw it bad on purpose and you tried to spin the ball long ways. <laughs> you know, it's it's of, such a – the decision to not – to throw the ball is so bad. And then Michael Carter just bullies the defender and comes down with it. The fact that it wasn't a pick is ridiculous. But he is – I highlight that because Zach Wilson will do that. He will make bad decisions – Believing that his arm can get things done that it can't. That was Welcome to the Fold, presented by our friends at Samsung Galaxy Unfold, the edge-to-edge -edge screen of the Galaxy Z Fold 4 to maximize your game viewing slash waiver wire experience wherever you're at, and you can visit Samsung.com to learn more. Full stream ahead. So we're going to each give you a streaming quarterback option. Again, we're looking at you know sub-50% rostered players. It's a desperate time for the Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson managers. Those are three really big names. Um, and so you're talking about bottom-of-the-barrel opportunities here. And I'm going to bring up a name that I never thought – Oh man! I would ever bring up. I went, you know, I went throughout the office, and I was like, "Hey, Kyle, do I go with the and the, the player I went with, or the one you're talking about? Because it's time. It's put on your big boy pants. I mean these these underpants are riddled with years <laughs> yes. years of stains. Um, this was Zach Wilson before it was cool. Sammy playoff Darnold, <laughs> Sam Darnold, <laughs> taking on the Detroit Lions. Yes, he is. And to me, you know, oh, baby. you know, Carolina wants to run the ball over and over and over again. But Detroit has been excellent against the run. You saw last week, Deonta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard couldn't get anything going. The Lions are going to put up points against Carolina's defense. And most importantly of me even uttering good old playoff Darnold's name, the Lions are the single best matchup for quarterbacks on the year. And they have been the best for the last five weeks. So, they have been very consistent on giving up 20-plus fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. It's disgusting. Yep. But you are looking at – when you are aiming for a stream at this point, you are not trying to save Jalen Hurts with another Jalen Hurts. You're not. You're not going to be able to do that. You're trying to get 202, and then anything else is gravy from your emergency. You know, last week, the person who lost Kyler picked up Brock Purdy, 202. It was enough to get it done. Mm -hmm. So Sam Donald against Detroit, you're you're hundred percent leaning on the matchup. But I think they're gonna have to throw the football. And I think Detroit's gonna put up enough points to make them throw the football. I I do not disagree. Uh it it feels bad, but here's where we are. If you are having to stream a quarterback, I'm gonna throw out Daniel Jones. He gets to play against the Minnesota Vikings, averaging seven and a half rushing attempts, forty two yards per game on the ground, gives you a, a decent baseline and Minnesota, I mean, you saw it with the Colts. There was a reason why the unobtainium underpant play of the week was Matt Ryan. Uh, and Matt Ryan was on his way to an okay game, and then 33-0 to zero happened, and they shut down the offense. Uh, Minnesota allowing the most first down via the pass, the second highest yards per attempt. Look, the Minnesota secondary is bad, and Daniel Jones, Darius Slayton, they could hit on a big play, and plus the rushing floor, so it's – uh, it, you could definitely do worse than Daniel Jones this week. I've never seen a man with more going on in his head 
before yeah. he has to yeah, speak. What are you thinking about than over Jason here? Moore right now? I mean, he is <sighs> he he's having oh for those listening at home and not watching this man melt down on air. I mean, he is what's, reacting. What's wrong, buddy? He's reacting to his own internal dialogue in a conversation <laughs> where his facial expressions are. Are reacting to himself. Uh, so I'm like the I'm, kombucha lady. I'm looking at the streaming options. Uh, the one that I had in, and I'm tr- basically what I'm trying to decide is push comes to s- shove between two players. Those two players are Zach Wilson, who I, we just talked about how bad he can be, yeah, don't how do terrible, um, you know, a, a, a play he'll have, he'll throw it. But keep, keep in mind, like Jameis Winston was phenomenal for fantasy when he threw 30 interceptions because sometimes you need that to have to throw the ball but he again. Also, but he also threw touchdowns at the time. And so did Zach Wilson last week. Zach Wilson was good last week. The Jacksonville Jaguars, since week six, they are dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points to quarterbacks. If you look over the last, I mean, just going backwards and you look versus teams averages, I mean, it's been forever since they haven't given up more to the quarterback than what that quarterback's average usually is. Jason, I will give you anything to 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 go for the ride on Thursday night. You're saying in my league of record matchup and put Zach Wilson. <laughs> no way. Okay, Which so then you can't possibly that's the say an- this. Yes, that is the answer. Okay. That is the answer. So Just, I'm instead of unobtainium underpants or iron underpants, I'm taking my underpants are, off. Zach Wilson or t- it's radioactive. Like you're. You're going to end up terrible. If and I can't do this, he and has, I can't. He has six passing touchdowns in eight games. Then That's I, Zach Wilson. Th- thank you for talking sense to me. I'm, I'm going commando, <laughs> which means I'm going Gardner Minshew because you know he's <laughs> oh, going yeah, commando. Oh, yeah, you know he's commando. He is still a viable <laughs> streaming option. He's free. <laughs> Here's what I don't think happens. I don't think that Minshew goes out and has just you know eight or fewer fantasy points falls completely on his face in a tough matchup against the Dallas Cowboys with this offensive line with the weapons with AJ Brown Dallas Goddard back Devonta Smith I think he throws 202 hopefully he runs a little bit more than we've seen because he does have that ability and he is a I if push came to shove and this was my team and I had to make that start in fantasy playoffs. I, I couldn't get myself to actually start Zach Wilson. Thank you, Mike. I would I would put Minshew in. Russell Wilson is interesting if he's back. He has the Rams sure. followed by the Chiefs over the next two weeks. Derek Carr has Pittsburgh. Yeah, you don't want that. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't mind it. Okay. You have, he has Devontae Adams as well. And then Brock Purdy has Washington. So those are three other options that are – like Jason, you already already stashed Geno Smith, so yes. that's somebody that you have as an option. You know, I don't think it's a guarantee he's better than these streamers, but he's somebody that is more proven than them. Yeah, he's over been on- the course of the year, and the the locket thing that that's troublesome. Um, that that would be my only concern about Mister. Geno Smith. Yeah. Oh. Of all of these options, I would start Geno Smith over Darnold Wilson, Minshew, Daniel Jones, Carr, Purdy. I mean, I, I'm going to be doing that. Obviously, the weather's going to be cold and you don't have Tyler Lockett, but I think... You're not thinking about Minshew to stack with your Devontae Smith? Or you feel like that doubles your risk? I, I was going to say, I, I think Devontae Smith becomes a, you know, I was telling Mike, he's probably a, a four for 50 type of play this week, so... Uh, I would rather not double up the whoops there, and I'm going to be trying to pick up Gardner Minshew, but I will probably play uh, Geno Smith. Th- this week is tough for streaming quarterbacks. Next week in the championship week, there's actually really great options for uh, starts. So this is the week where if you're if you're in the streaming category, if you lost Hurts, if you lost Kyler, and you're still in the playoffs. How about if you're not? What, if you're not in the playoffs? No, if you're not in the streaming category. You should still oh. pick up good matchups for next week, so you're not. Yes. I mean, Jason had Geno Smith already. Like, you're the Josh yeah. Allen manager. You're the, you know, Joe Burrow manager. Like, play go some, get Jared Goff right now or something. Yeah, absolutely play some defense. But uh, Jared Goff's my favorite. I mean, he is going to be at home in Week 17 there, yeah. against Chicago. He should be a top-10 quarterback play in championship week. Yeah, and just we'll just rattle off some other names because – you may need to be getting ready for the following week. You know, fingers crossed that you win. Goff, should he be there, would be sensational. Rodgers is kind of right in that territory as well where maybe some people drop him, but he gets the Minnesota Vikings. 
If you roll with Daniel Jones, he gets the Colts. Uh, Andy mentioned Russell Wilson would get the Kansas City Chiefs. Brock Purdy gets the Las Vegas Raiders. And the last one, it, should Colt McCoy come back from the concussion, he would get the Atlanta Falcons. So if I think the, the, the bigger point is if you have Jalen Hurts, abs hold out your hope that you're going to get Jalen Hurts next week. But you need to be planning that Jalen Hurts is going to miss multiple weeks. So have your quarterback ready so that it doesn't you're you're not waiting for next week's waivers to run and the other team also knows exactly what you need to go after. Handle your business right now. All right. I think that's gonna wrap things up. How are we doing over there in Deucer's Alley? We ready for the Christmas uh Christmas day this weekend? Doing great. Yeah. You got anything on your wish list, Brooksy? Anything special? Nah. You want Santa to bring you? Nah. No. Nothing on mine. Fresh basket of apples. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Honey crisp. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have an update here. Uh, first round of the Megala Bowl playoffs. And the shark from Jaws 3D. Oh, no. Is out. Oh, no. I told you your regular season <laughs> don't matter. You, uh, the uh, Oh, our favorite shark. I know. He is He is no longer in the Megala Bowl League. Skunk League, who went 30-0 and regular season, did make it to the next round. I hope you don't have Jalen Hurts like I do. Well, the truth is, is Jalen Hurts, you said it in the studio yesterday, he carried tons of people to the playoffs. I do wonder how many advancing to the second round Megala Bowl teams have Jalen Hurts because you got a full game. You had an awesome week from Jalen Hurts, and in those situations, I'll bet a lot of the, the, the waivers are locked. So you're going to have a lot of quarterbackless teams in round two. I th I thought you would be doing worse today than you're doing. You seem like you're rallying, Jason. The like, show has helped me because prior to the show, when I when the show started, like literally, uh, music is going. I had very little life in my soul. <laughs> I'm I am struggling, but I'm I'm doing better now thanks to you two guys. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Oh wait. Wait. Like, <laughs> like, hey, I I noticed you're doing better. Take this. Ha! <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for joining us. It's time to make your move. Let's get that title. See you later, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.